What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be building a random chord generator together. But before we dive in, let's kind of give you guys a demo of what we about to build. This is the app. You got a couple number of functionality that you can do. Number one, you can go here and get a chord. As I'm clicking new chords, new chords are popping in. I can find new chords once I click this button. Number two, I can also require how many number of chords that I can get. I can get four chords and I can get eight chords and I can get the four chords. Number two, the only thing to notice here is every chord has the name of Chuck Norris as the character. However, if I do not like this, I can change the character name to be equal to any person's name such as my name and boom, I no longer have Chuck Norris in none of my chord. Number four. As I'm hovering over every single chord, I see a tweet quote button. And if I clicked on this one, I can now post my tweet into my Twitter account. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the entire app that we're going to build. But one last thing as we dive in, if I select a bunch of code, as you can see here, there is a loading state about our application that allows us to know either or not the codes are loading. Lastly, but not least, if I try to search for a new code, which I do not have any internet access, which I just turn off my network as offline, I'll show you guys how to do that. But the bottom line, if, if I do not have any internet, there's also an error handling that will tell me, hey, this is the issue that you're currently having right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the entire apps we're going to build in this entire video. But before we dive in, there's a couple of things that you need to make sure that you at least have an understanding how they work. Number one, you need to make sure that you have Node.js installed. If you're not sure how to do that, you can open your terminal and type the command node-v that should give you a version of the currently node version that you have installed into your computer. Number two, you need to have the Create React app globally installed into your computer. If you do not have this, you can just follow this command and you should be able to get up to speed. However, this entire video requires you to have a really strong basic foundation of React, such as the concept of props, states, as we go into diving and show you how we can put all of them together to build this app. All right, let's get our hands dirty. First thing first, I need to open my terminal. Wherever I have that open, I need to navigate to wherever I'd like to create this folder. In my case, I'd like to go into a folder called YouTube, and inside that folder, I'd like to create another folder called Client. Client is going to be the name of my application. Uh, I'm going to create that using the Create React app, and I'm going to call this one Client. Client is going to be the name of my application. This should take a couple seconds before it goes and install every single package that I have into my computer. For those of you that have a slow system, it might take up to 15 minutes or so. Uh, but again, be patient and making sure that you have everything installed. And that command should go ahead and install and should display something like this. If you do have something like that, you should be ready to go. Second step, I need to go inside my client folder. So this is what I'm going inside my client folder. And once I am inside that client folder, I need to open that client folder inside your favorite text uh, editor. For my case, I'm using VS Code. If you guys have Atom, whatever it is, feel free to open it inside that. But the goal behind this is you need to have that folder open into your text editor or IDE, whatever it is. Once that's done, you should have something that looks like this, such as an SOC folder. This is where all your React applications are going to be. Now, once you have this ready to go, all I need to do now is open my terminal. I just drag it down here and that should open this terminal and I do npm start. Make sure you are inside the terminal section, not inside the debug console. So inside the terminal section. This should start your React application server for you. If everything works as expected, you should see the following into your terminal. And once you see these, you can go to your browser and type HTTP. You can type HTTP slash localhost 3000, and that should bring you this home page. Again, you should be able to see something like that in order for you to continue for the next step. 
a couple things I'd like to do here. There's a couple files that I do not need. I'm going to go here and delete the logo, delete the server uh, worker, and I do not going to do any tests for this. I'm going to delete all these three files for now. And once I and all I need is go inside my app.js file. Inside my app.js files, I'm going to create a very simple component from scratch. First thing I need to do is import React app. Once React app is imported, I'm going to define a component called app. I'm going to extend that from the React component, and I'm going to create my JSX here. I'm going to create a very simple div, and within that div, I'm going to say welcome to my app. So all I have is a very basic React application, nothing fancy. Again, I'm going to go and export this. Uh, react component right here so i have this component and i'm using the name of that component to export it as default oops seems like my react application did not start as expected it is because if i go inside the index.js uh, this is still being referred from the files that i deleted so i need to go ahead and delete that line and also delete this line as well because this files is no longer existing because i deleted it from the beginning so i'll go here and remove this line and if I save that, that should stop my application. And if I go back to the browser, ladies and gentlemen, I have my welcome to my app ready to go. Nothing fancy, very simple message that's displaying the user. Hey, welcome to my app. There is a couple of things I'd like to do here. Uh, in order for me to build this app, I need to go inside the SOC. I'm going to create a folder called components. Within that component, I'm going to have a couple component files, such as one of them that's going to display all the codes. I can call this one list of codes.jsx. Notice how I put the uh, .jsx at the end of it. This is just for the auto completion to work inside my VS Code. Second component I'd like is I'd like to have a component called code character. This is the one that's going to be in charge to change the name of my character based on what I type. Lastly but not least, I'd like to create something called uh, code selection which is going to be a component responsible for whenever I select either two, four, or eight, and then fetch the component for me. And without that out of the way, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, these are going to be the three components that's going to get the job done. All right, I have three components created. Now, the only thing I'd like to do here is inside the SOC file, I'd like to create a folder called utils. And inside this folder, I'm gonna create a file called api.js. This is where I'm going to be making all the API calls. If this doesn't make sense for now, don't worry. As we're coding things step by step, you will see how I'm kind of bringing them together. But the idea behind it is this is where all my API requests are going to be. All right. So again, let's kind of quickly review what we have. We created a component folder that has three files inside of it. Nothing crazy. All it has is three files got, that's going to be component that do different things. Number two, we create a folder called utils and inside that util folder, we have something called api.js. This is going to be responsible for all API transaction into our app. All right, so there is a last thing I'd like to do, guys. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is give this one a test. In order to test this, let's build a very simple dummy component here. Uh, inside the list, I'm gonna bring React. Once I have React, I'm going to define a component here called, that's going to be in a row function. It's going to return some JSX. And for now, all I want this one to do the same thing, just to display a message to make sure that I can have something that's displayed. And this one, I'm going to call this one a list of quotes, something very basic. And once I have that, I'm going to bring this component name and export this component name as default. There you go. So I created a component. And then I'm exporting that component name, which is a list of quotes. This is a functional component that I just created, which is just a function. So once I have that, I'm going to do copy this, right click and copy this over. And I'm technically going to copy the same thing here. The only difference I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name instead of list of quote. I'm going to change this one to be quote character. Again, I, place, I change this one into two places, quote character and here. And that should make this one available for me. Instead of list of code, that's going to be character. Cool. I'm going to select everything again. And I'm going to right click and copy that. And I'm going to go over to the code selection and paste it right there as well. And I'm going to change the name to code selection. All right. So here's what I have so far. Okay. I go ahead and create what they call a functional component. 
all I do is change this one here message and then change export this quote export this quote section which is the name of our component and now I technically have three component that has a very basic message inside of them so all of these three has a very basic message the first one has list of quotes the second one has uh, character and the third one has code collection so once I have those very simple message inside my component I'm gonna go wherever I have the app.js this is important so I go inside the app.js and I'm gonna bring all these three component here all right the first thing I do is I'd like to import all my component the first one I'm importing is the one that's called list of quotes and I'm gonna go here give it the path of where it is located so here's where I'm at. I'm, I'm inside the app.js. So I need to go inside a folder called component. And inside the component, I need to get this component. So I'll do that slash component, that slash list of quotes. And I'm going to do that for the two order one. And boom, here's the order two component that I just bring. So I just bring the code character, which is this one. And I also bring the code selection as well. So all these three components that was located here or being imported inside the app.js, okay? So once they are imported, I'm gonna go here and technically display them or render them just for me to be able to visually see. So I'm gonna render the list of code and I'm gonna render the other one, which is code character. Lastly, code selection. There you go, I have these three component render right here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to test and making sure that those all at least working properly. If I open my terminal, everything looks good. And if I go back to my browser and boom, I have these three component ready to go. So I'd like to stop my server. And what I'm going to do is remember, we're going to use an API. Before I go and explore the API we're going to use, I'm gonna go ahead here and install a package called Axio. And Axio is going to be the one that allows us to uh, make the API calls. In dash capital S, it is just saving it as a dependency. All right, guys, that should take a long time if this is your first package you install, but the goal is wait until the Axios package is finished. I'm gonna stop my server again, and everything should be working fine as expected. I already have my Axios installed, and my app is looking good. All right, so let's just review what we've done. Very basic, we go inside this folder called components, and we just bring every single of them into this page, and once we bring every single one of them into this page, into this component, we just render them right here. This is what we've done. Next step, before I dive into any code, I'd like to go and show you guys the API we're going to use. We're going to use this API called ICNDB API. You can search it into Google. It should take you to the first link. It is a really cool API that gives you cool jokes about chalk notes. Now, if you want to see the jokes, you can click the jokes. You kind of see a list of entire jokes that they give you. Um, but the one we're going to use is make sure that you guys select the section that said API. This is the one that we're going to use. Okay. Uh, but there's a couple of things here. Uh, there's a couple of information. The first information that you can see, you can change the name of the character by just passing the extra param. So if I copy this URL, copy this one, paste it into the website, can see the first name actually change instead of uh, Chuck Norris I see John Norris but there is an issue here because if you see I still see the word Norris even though I'm changing the last name to be equal to do so the only issue here is I need to remove this extra end sign so let's make sure we get rid of that and if I paste it again now I see the entire John Doe so be mindful whenever you copy this URL you need to make sure that you remove the inside otherwise it will be acting weird but we still have one issue here because we want to be able to get the number of quotes that we want right now we're only getting one quote at a time all right let's see what we have here so if i keep going down wherever i see fetch multiple random quote the only difference within this api is instead of this then i can use this here and all i need to do is pass the quantity of the number that I'd like to get. So if I go back to my API, wherever I have this entire string, here's the word random. So right after random, I'm gonna pass slash and give it the number of quotes that I want. I can say 20, and that's gonna go here and get 20 quotes. 
So I'm going to copy this API, go back inside my code, go wherever I have the util folder, go inside API, I'm going to paste this link here. Now there's a couple of things I'd like you guys to focus here, okay? This is important. Number one is the, the quantity of codes can be changed over time. It can be 5, 10. Second thing is the, the first name. The first name can change as well. It can be Sterling, it could be anything. Uh, and third is the last name as well. So these are the three dynamic value that we're going to somehow be able to generate out of the fly so that whenever we call in this API, it can get the dynamic value that we want. All right, first thing first, I'm going to go here and import Axial. Second, I'm going to go here and export an entire object that's going to contain a function called get random quotes. Now this function is going to be an row function that's going to contain three params. Number one is the number of quotes we want. Second param is the first name and last one is the last name. Cool, which means those values are going to be dynamic as possible. And all I need to do now is bring Axios and I'm going to do Axios.get and here I'm going to use a back tit, okay? This is a back tit which I'm going to use which I'm going to use the ES6 template literal to be able to dynamically uh, generate those values. All right, I'm going to come here and copy my URL and I'm going to I'm going to paste my URL here. So this is my entire URL that's going to go ahead and get the code. However, remember these values should be dynamic. So I'm going to change this one to be equal uh, to the param that's going to come here which going to refer to this guy. The second one is the value of the first name. So I'm going to change this one to be equal dynamically, which is going to equal to the value of the first name that's coming in as well. And third one is the value of the last name. And boom. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what's happening here. So these three params will dynamically be generated inside here and also inside here. And lastly, inside here. And the last thing we need to do for this function is making sure that we return this function here. And believe it or not, we are done inside that particular uh, file that we're working with, which is the API.js. Now, to test this into our application, we need to go inside the app.js. And here, I'm going to bring that API file that I have. The location, it's located inside It's located inside a folder called util. So here's the folder. It's located inside something called util. And inside util, I'm going to get the file name. I'm going to use this API or aka this function whenever the component uh, mount, which means after everything finished with the component, I'd like to go ahead and execute this API call. To do that, I'll do API slash get random code, that random code. And after that, I can do that then and that cache just in case there's an error. I'm going to pass a function inside of here. I'm going to console log data response that data and the response is going to come here and lastly this one is going to be error and i can change this one to be equal to error and i can say error that uh, message uh, and so on all right so what just happened i know you guys might be like all right so what they just happened you don't know but here's what i'm doing here okay so i go inside this function here i do that then which takes a function this function takes a param that's called response. This is our axios work. Everything's going to come over the response. And I do response that data to get the data that are going to come from the API. Second thing, I also did that catch. Uh, and the catch just takes a function that's going to go here and technically uh, display the error message as well. All right, that should go ahead and get the codes whenever the page load. But we're missing one here. Remember, this function takes a couple of params. If we go back to the function, remember, this function takes a couple of the param. Uh, the first param that it takes, it is the num. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it a num by default. I'm going to pass it to you uh, to get two quotes. And second, I'd like to pass it a name. For this one, I'd like to pass it chart. Uh, and then that's the first name. Last, I'll pass it chart noise. Even though by default, it's going to search for that. But I just want to show you guys that those value matters in order for us to make uh, the API calls. And now to test this out, if I go back to my app and if I open the console, right click inspect and if I refresh the page, there you go. I have this data that is coming back from my API and let's see what's inside of it. There is something called success. There is something called value that contains all the codes such as code number one, 
coat number two and within the code i have an object uh, that has this value inside of it such as id and code ladies and gentlemen our api is working we're able to go and get the codes from the api what's next the first thing i like to do is instead of having them just console login right now i'd like to set those codes inside the state i'm gonna have a state that has a key called codes by default gonna have an array also gonna have a first name that's gonna have by default called chalk same as the last name that's gonna be default as noise second i'd also like to have an error message just in case we have any error message for now it's going to be empty i'm also going to have something called num code that's going to default by one which is going to be equal to the number of codes that we want we're going to have two extra properties the first one is is error that's going to be a balloon or flag that's going to tell us either there is an error that occurs and lastly we're going to have something called is loading this is going to be the one that tells us this the loading state of uh, of the api request all right ladies and gentlemen let's review what we've done so far first thing first we go inside util we create a function called i'll call get random but this function is inside an object here that we call it get random which takes three value the first one is the num of the many quotes we want or jokes uh, second one is the first name uh, third one is the last name and we dynamically put those value in here lastly we bring this api here and whenever the component finish loaded then we call this function and for now we are just console logging the result for us to visually be able to see what's happening uh, third we have this value here that are now for default but we want them to be generating out of the blue okay so once i have the data remember the data is going to be response that data so once i have this data i'd like to update my state uh, for this one here i'd like to do one thing instead of having this function i'm going to turn this function into an row function and then now i can be able to use this that set state and i'm going to do uh, update the state the first value i'd like to update inside my state is going to be the codes value and i'm going to make this codes equal to all uh, all the codes that i'm getting such as response that data and let's see after we got the data which was this i can do that value to get an array of codes so response that data that value and after that, after we successfully get the data, which means there is no error, I'm going to set that error state to false just in case that we were displaying an error. And we're also going to set the is loading to false as well to say, hey, buddy, uh, no need for you to display a loading thing. It's already finished. We get the data. We are good to go. All right, again, all we're doing inside the that then is we're setting this value. The only thing I like to do is inside the catch, instead of console logging the error, I'm going to do the following. First thing I need to do is change the function name to equal to an array function. And then I'm going to set the value of my state. In this case, I'm going to go and set a couple value inside my state. The first thing I'd like to set is, hey, yes, there is an error. So I'm going to set this one to true. It's the application is no longer loading. So we're going to set this one to false. And lastly, we also going to display an error message and we're going to say the error message is going to be equal to whatever we get back from the error. So we could say error that message. And then by default, we could say uh, fail fetching uh, quote, something like that. All right. So we've done that. Now, there's one thing I'd like to mention here, which is very important. OK, we setting the quotes, we setting the error, we setting the is loading and so many things. But when, if you take a look at the is loading, the good question is, when is that value set to true? Well, this value is set to true whenever the transaction of the API starts. For this one is, before we call this API request, we're going to set that value here as true, just a way to tell the user that, hey, we about to be fetching some data for you. Those data are fetching, and whenever they completed, we're going to set this flag to false. This is just a quick way to say, hey, uh, this is when we're going to set this flag to false. All right, now we have this again, guys. Bear with me. This is almost done. We're going to be go, go on able and test that. The only thing I'd like to do is I'd like to go here and console log my state. Again, I should be able to see my state have those data, okay? All right, so I come here inside the render. 
I go here and console log all my data inside my state. So if everything worked as expected, and whenever the component finish mount, it should go ahead and console log my data that is inside my state. And I should be seeing uh, the codes have at least some data. If not, then I'm definitely doing something wrong. Open my terminal, making sure everything looks good. Everything looks good. Fantastic. And if I refresh the page, cool. And if I go inside my state here, open that one. And the codes, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, my codes are being in inside um, my state's object. All right, once you validate that the data are actually inside your state, the next step is uh, we need to pass those data somehow to this component. If you guys remember this component, they were coming from inside this component files. So somehow we're gonna need to pass this codes data that we just validate. And so we had some codes in it, we're going to need to pass it to uh, different of this component based on whichever needs them. In our case, the only one that needs them is this component. All right, so what are we trying to do? Inside here, I'm going to add a props. I'm going to call this one codes, and I'm going to refer to the value that is inside the state. So I do this, that state, and I'm referring to the value that is inside this code, okay? And once I pass this value as a prop, I need to go back wherever this component is, in this case, it is list of comp code. So I go to this component. Now those value are gonna come here as a prop. Once they come here, what I can do over here is I can loop over that value. I can do props, prop that codes in that map. This is a way to loop over it. And I use parentheses instead of curly bracket. And here can pass it a div. And I'm gonna pass it every single quote and I can say quote and now I can get those value of this quote by doing the following now every single element gonna have a quote so I can name this one quote and I can do quote uh, that joke remember the key value we need here is the joke because how the data will come in is this this is the object and we can do that code to get the quote all right, so we're looping over every single quote, and as we're looping over, we are displaying every single quote here. And ladies and gentlemen, if we go back into our application, we should be able to see our quotes listed and ready to go. And boom, there you go. We are seeing our quotes display inside our page. Inside the list component, as I'm looping over every single quote, there's one thing I need to do here is add a key and I'm going to give it the value of right here. I'm going to add an extra index. It doesn't really matter. I just call it index and make sure that we give it here. This is something that is required as you're looping over every single element. And if I open my browser and boom, I'm seeing my codes being rendered as you guys can see. And if I go back to my app.js component, change this number instead of two and change it to five, I should now be seeing uh, five quotes about Chuck Norris. There you go. My application is working as expected. Cool. Everything looking good so far, as you guys can see here. But there's one thing I'd like to do this. Uh, I'd like to do if I go back into my util api.js and try to break the API, just try to change something random and save it. And again, validate that your server is up and running. And if I go back into the app, I do not see any error message. That's not useful for me. However, if I go back in time, my state, uh, if this value actually updated, tell me that, hey, there is an error and I even have an error message. So I need to find a way to display and say, hey, buddy, for some reason, you have an error and this is what the error is. So I'd like to add a message that's allow the user to see, hey, this is the type of error that we're currently having right now. So what I can do is go back inside the app.js because uh, those values being updated already. So I'm going to create a function here. It's going to say show error message. What this one's going to do is first it's going to get the error message. It's going to say is error. I'm going to get this value from the state. Once I have this value from the state, I'm going to do a hey, if there is an error. What do you want to do in this case? If there is an error, I only want to return. Just want to return an error with uh, the message of the error, such as error that state and error message. So all I'm saying is, if there is an error, let's just return this error. And I want to add a class name 
here uh, as the error in case I would like to style this class later on. Once I have that, I need to come here and call this function wherever I need it. In this case, I'm just going to come here right after the h2 tag and I'm going to call this function like this. So this is how I call the error function in order for it to display the error message. Check my server again, looking good. And if I go back to my application, there you go. It is displaying this error message again. Uh, this is not useful because the error message is not being colored. So let's add one CSS for now just to be able to target that class and just make it red for simplicity sake. So I go back inside my app. I already have an app.js for my bullet plate. I'm going to go here, delete all of that, and I'm going to select the error class and I'm going to make it equal to color red. So once I have this CSS file, I need to go inside my app.js. And here, all the way on top, I'm going to bring that CSS file. So I'll do out that CSS, and that should come at least and import that CSS file with uh, this style here apply. And boom, now my error message is good. If I go back inside my API and fix whatever issue I have, I should not see the error message. So the error message only happened in case there is an error with the right message. The only thing I'd like to get this done before I move on into anything else, if I go back to the network tab and under the network tab, I can select on the online version right here and I can select a slow, uh, a slow network for it to load my app. But if I refresh this, it takes a second before the codes come. If I refresh it again, It takes a second before all the codes come. But what if I could display a message for it to say loading? Maybe I want to show loading spinner, whatever you guys feel like to. For the sake of this, I'm just going to display a loading message for you guys to see that. So what I like to do here is this. Uh, wherever you have uh, this here, in my case, I'm going to display my loading right here. So in my case, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create an entire function that says show code. And beside this function, that's where I'm going to uh, do a couple of things. Number one I'd like to do is get that value that said it's loading on uh, this state that is loading. That stated the value that I set uh, here as the beginning of my request. So once I have that value, I'm going to do a check and say if this value is actually is equal to true, then I'm going to return a very simple basic B tag that will potentially set our uh, code loading something like that now if this value is not set this is when i want to render my actual codes which i'm going to take this entire thing here and move it down here so all i'm saying is we're going to put everything inside this function that's going to be responsible to display the loading icon and also display the codes as well and all i need to do now is bring this function call this function right here so i'll do this that code and ladies and gentlemen, that should be working as expected. Let's take a look. So now if I refresh the page again, on a slow connection, my code is loading. And after it finished loading, then it rendered the code. Let's try it again. Boom, my code's loading. And after it finished, then it renders my code. So my error in code displaying and loading state is all working fantastic. So now let's go here and disable the slow network. I'm going to put it as online and get back to my console and continue building this application. All right, before we go any further, let's quickly review what we've done. So far, here's what we we're able to accomplish. We went here and set first the loading state as true as, hey, we're about to make an API request. Let's set the loading state of the application to true. Second, we are setting a couple value inside our state. Number one, we're setting the codes. We're setting the error to their initial state. And, uh, and, and in case there is an error, then we're going to set the error to true. And we're also setting the is loading to false just to kind of remove that loading icon so it doesn't stay there forever. We also display an error message as well. Third thing, we also show that message, which is being called down here as a way saying that, hey, in case there is an error, then we're going to get the error flag, 
we're checking if that error flag is equal to true. If it's equal to true, then we're going to render the following. Lastly, we also build another function which is equal to this that is actually going to display the code. But before it display the code, it's also adding, uh, bringing the login or the is loading flag and checking if it's loading, then display this message. Again, for your case, you can display anything. Uh, and if that's not the case, then I'm gonna render this component with all the codes. So I'd like to give the user the ability to be able to filter our codes based into numbers, such as number two, number three, number four. And if you guys remember, there was a component that was dedicated for this, which was this code selection component right now it is empty i mean not empty it doesn't have anything into it so let's add something here so i'm going to add a select i'm going to give this one a name called num quote i'm going to add a total of four option uh, the first one is actually one the second one is actually two the third one is actually four and then the last one is actually eight and you guys get the idea you can add as many more as you want to but for the sake of this i'm just going to add uh, eight more uh, option. So once I have that, let's see how it looks. And if I go, you can see this option here for now. It's not doing anything for now, which is technically pretty, pretty, pretty basic. There's nothing inside of it. But instead of having this H2 tag, I'm going to turn it into just like a tiny little P tag. And I'm going to say get codes by. Cool, something like that. All right, cool. How can we get those input value? To get those input value, I'm gonna write a function here that's called handle change. That's going to be the ones responsible to get those input value. Here, it's gonna take an event. I'm gonna take that event. I'm gonna get a couple of value from that event. First, I'm gonna get the name. I'm gonna do event.target.name. Second, I'm gonna also get the value of that as well. All right, so once I have that value in name, I'm gonna set the state with the name that's gonna be changing over time. So here's what I'm doing. I'm saying, all right, whatever the name is, which is equal to num codes, get this name here and find a value that is inside the state that has this name value. Whenever you find that value here, then update it with whichever value that the user selected. For example, if they select one, then update this num code value inside the state with one. If the user select two, then update the code with two, and so, and so, and so on. So this handle change now is gonna do the following, but how can we pass this handle change over to this component? Well, the way we do that is we copy this handle change this is the component so we're going to do handle change and after we pass this value to this component we need to go inside this component and we save it as a props and there is an event on that select value that's called on change and then we're going to use that function here which is prop that handle change all right again that might sound confusing but here's what we're doing again this select here has an event called on change and every single time that event fires we are calling this function and this function is coming from here and what is it doing it is getting the name attribute it is getting the value and updating the specific name value here into our state but what do we want to happen every time that it update the state well we want to run this entire our code over and over again. So I, for now, I'm gonna show you guys a better way to write that, but for now, I'm just gonna copy and paste it right there. I just copied this entire code that was inside a component mount and paste them right here. And now, once we have that here, the only change we need to do is wherever we have the hard coded value, we're actually gonna change it with the actual value that is coming from this component, which is gonna be of value. So instead of here, we're going to change this one with the value here. And let's see if that works. So now if we change this one to two, that should go and get two codes. If we change it to four, that should go and get four codes. And if we change it to eight, that should go and get eight codes. And if we change it to one, we still go and get one code and so on. Things are looking good for now, but there's a couple of things that's going on here this code is redundant because we're doing the same lines of code 
over and over and over. The only thing that seems to be matter is this three value. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to create another function here that's going to be a wrapper that's called get random code. And I'm going to, so I'm going to bring this entire code inside the random, the get random code here. So I'm going to copy this entire code, which is this one. And I'm going to bring this inside wherever you have the get random code. Now, why am I doing this? It is now this function can actually take the same param that the other one takes, such as last name and on name and so on. And I can actually pass those value right there as well. Well, once I have this function here, all I need to do to use it every single time I need it, all I need to do is do this, that get random and pass those value here now and chart notice that was the value and then uh, notice and if I want to call this function again I'm gonna remove this entire code and call this get random function and pass it the va the value with the quantity the quantity which is in this case is equal to this value all right so now this makes it a little bit shorter Every time we need a code, we just need to call this function with the three random uh, value. Uh, it's easy to read and it's easy to maintain right now. And this one should be working as expected. And if I check this one, that should still be working just like normal. If I select one again, there you go. If I do that, it's working as designed. Okay, great. So this feature now is technically completed. One last thing I'd, I'd like to do here. Right now we are hard coding this value. I want this value, this three value to be coming from the state. So I'm going to come here and destructure this value. I'm going to here get the num of quotes. I'm going to get the first name from my state and I'm also going to get the last name and pass all these three value instead of the hard coded version here so that they can be coming from my states. And now the default one is gonna be one. The first name is gonna be Chuck Norris. The last name is gonna be uh, uh, Chuck Norris as well. And whenever the component loads, it's gonna get those initial value here, which is these uh, three value here. Boom, I only got one quotes and I can change it to two, to four and one and two and everything is working just like expected all right the next phase of the app we want to do now is before we wrap this session again uh, i'd like to leave the css port as last just in case you guys just want to get the functionality completed uh, the next phase is the ability for the user to change the character all right everything looking good uh, oops i think we got a box we're getting undefined whenever we select something for example if i select four I got undefined it is because whenever I'm calling this on change it is not passing the first name so let's uh, let's pass uh, chark and then let's pass uh, no race as well once code loaded chart no race is coming back and ready to go all right so we just fixed this but the second thing I'd like to do here is this whenever the user enter uh, their first name and last name i want to give the user the ability for them to uh, to change the character name instead of chart norris i want them to give the user the ability to change chart norris with any names that they want to okay all right so in order to do that if you guys remember I have a component here called character and character is going to be uh, the component that's gonna technically be and if you guys want to see where it's at it's still inside the component so I go into character and that should bring me the character. So character is going to be the component that is going to be responsible to handle that piece of the functionality. All right, so how can we do that? I'm going to go here and build a very basic form. All right, the first thing I have here is very basic. I have a placeholder, I have a type test, and I have a name first name inside all of that input. It is inside a div. Uh, and then I'm just going to go here and copy this one over for the last name. And lastly but not least, I do have a button. Now for the last name, I make, sure, make sure you guys have those two attributes right here because they are important. This is what we're going to use to match the value that is inside our state by that specific key. Okay, this is important. All right, so let's see how this looks like right now. 
And if we take a look at it, of course, we have this input field that doesn't do anything right now. It is technically very basic. There's nothing that's being done there. So we got a, we need a couple function. The first function that we need is we need also to pass this function right there uh, to that component. So let's do that. Let's do handle change and I'm going to pass this one to this component as well. So once I pass it to this component, I can go here and receive it as a props. And we're going to call this function on an event that's going to be on both on, on the input. And this event, it is something that is called on change. So on change, we're going to call this function that we're sending, which is something called handle change. So we'll do uh, props that handle change again here. Cool. All right, so, but there is one issue because if we start typing, uh, if we start typing, is going to call this function over and over. This is a costly operation because we don't want as we type for this one to happen. We only want this, this call to happen whenever we select something, not when we type. But let's verify that this is actually the issue that's happening right there. So if I type, you see, boom, this calls completed and our entire application just crashed and like so many things happening behind the scene uh, that we don't even know of what's going on. So we got two issues. Number one, first of all, our application crashed because uh, the quotes is map is not a function. We don't want that. We want to avoid this at all costs. Second, we don't want to call this function on every single time that we type. We want to avoid doing that. We only want to call it whenever something uh, is selected, which is whenever this is is selected. All right, so let's fix the uh, let's fix the first issue, which is let's uh, stop our application from crashing. And what is crashing is the code. So let's take a look at here. So here's where we're showing the codes. Okay. So if we take a look at this function that said show code, which is here. This is the function that is showing the code. One last thing I'd like to do in this case, I'd like, I'd like to check out another check, which is going to be saying, hey, if this state, that quotes, that length is actually greater than zero, which means if we have a code, then let's return that function because we don't want to uh, return that function if we don't even have one quotes inside of that. So let's see. So if I go and type something, it calls this function, which is fine, but our application doesn't crash. It's not complaining about map is not a function because we're not calling map if there is no item inside the array or if the array is something different than what we initially initialize it. All right, so this issue is first, but the second one is as we're typing, it's calling, it's calling, calling API. We don't want that. That's a heavy cost operation. How can we fix that? Well, what we can do is inside this handle change, this is where that knows whenever we type. And we only want to call it whenever the name is equal to number code, which is a way for us to identify that this is a selected operation. This is not like when the user type, this is when the user select. So in this case, this is where the name is coming in. So we can add a check and say, hey, if the name is the name is actually equal to whatever this name is, which is num quote, then this is when we want to call this function. If it's not equal to that, we're not going to do anything moving forward. So that should at least only call this function whenever we select that. Okay. And now if I type, you see it doesn't call, uh, it doesn't call the APIs. However, if I select something, that's when it goes and call, uh, the, that's when it goes and call the API. So this is working good. Uh, the second thing I do is as I'm typing, the state is being updated. If I take a look at the state, there you go. My last name is this. Uh, my first name of course, it, my first name of course is empty. I'm going to change it to something else and boom my first name updated. So this is working as expected. This is updating the state. This is doing everything. But we also want whenever we click to change the character, instead of being chunk notice, we wanted to make the API calls with the character name. First thing first, I'd like to fix one issue here, which is instead of hard coding those value, I'm going to get those value from the state. 
So I'm gonna do hey get the first name, get the last name from the state. I'm gonna pass this value here. Second thing I'd like to do is I'd like to create a function that's gonna be responsible for whenever we click the button uh, here, whenever we click the button element inside the quotes character. So I'm gonna call this function handle submit. First thing it's gonna do is gonna disable the browser behavior. Third thing it's gonna do is gonna get this three value from our state that we've been updating throughout the app. Num num quote, first name, last name. And lastly, we're gonna make an API request, which is with this get random quote this function that was responsible to make the API request. So we're gonna call this function here as well. Okay, now this is everything we need in terms of the function. Now we need to pass it down the component and this is the component we want to send this function to. So we're gonna send it as a prop. So we're gonna add an extra prop here and call it handle submit, this, that handle submit. So we end up having something like this. To receive it over the component, I'm gonna go here, and over the props, I'm gonna call it on this form. I'm gonna do whenever the user say on submit, I'm gonna do props that handle submit. So whenever the user do on submit, I'm gonna fire this uh, function that is coming over the prop, and I'm referring to this function, okay? Now I just add them on the second line just for you guys to see what I'm working with. This component has two prop and that's how I'm receiving them. Okay, cool. So here's what's happening. So whenever we, uh, whenever we submit this form, it's going to run this function. This function is going to disable the browser behavior, get this value from our state and make a, an API request to get those quotes. Cool. Let's see. So if I type Sterling, Aximate, and when I click change character, it should go and make an API request and then update, get new quotes, of course, and then update the new quotes with my character name. Boom, and now have this working. And I can get more quotes. Boom, all of them working as Sterling, and I can get as many one as I want. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is great, but still, we got one thing that we need to get done here, which is important. I want this feature to be toggled. What I mean is I want this feature to not out of the box show. I want to hide this feature unless the user clicked a button, okay? So in order for me to do that, I'm gonna add a toggle inside my state. So wherever you have your state, I'm gonna have an extra property here called is character enable. And by default, I'm gonna set it to false, which means I'm gonna hide every piece of that functionality. And I'm gonna have a function right here. I'm gonna name this function show character. And this character, I'm gonna bring that toggle here inside this function. I'm gonna do my check. I'm gonna say, all right, if this toggle is enabled, this is when we wanna render our component. What is our component? This is our entire component. We're gonna return that component right here. So if this toggle is enabled, we wanna return this component. What if this toggle is not enabled? Well, if this toggle is not enabled, I'm going to return a, uh, a button that's going to allow the user to click on that button. And after they click, we can say, we can call this function change character name. Again, what all this is saying is it's going to bring this is character, which is going to be by default false. And it's going to say, all right, if this character is enabled, we're going to render this component. If it's not enabled, then we're gonna technically render uh, the button component. One thing I'd like to mention here is this. Uh, you see how I do not need to do else to kind of say else. Uh, instead, how it works is uh, whenever I return something inside an if logic, it technically stops the execution of the function. And, uh, and which means this line won't even run if this case happened. It might sound confusing, but just keep that in mind. Uh, there's still, this one is still considered as an else because of that return statement here. Once we have this function, 
we need to bring this function here we need to copy this function and call it wherever this character was being displayed so we end up having three function in order show error show code and show character let's see how that all looks and boom ladies and gentlemen this entire functionality is being hidden of course when you click this button it doesn't do anything yet but what you really want to happen is you want to be able to to toggle that piece of functionality what i mean is the whole thing that is making this functionality disable is this so whenever i click i need to find a way to switch this one if it was false then set it to true if it was true then set it to false and keep doing the same thing over and over uh, because my logic is already handling uh, based either or not if it's true it's gonna render whichever one that is uh, that should be rendered all right lastly I'm gonna do the following I'm gonna create another function that's called I'm gonna call the function set enable character feature whatever this thing is called and this entire purpose of this function is whenever I call it on this button that's gonna do the following so here on the button I'm calling this function and what is it going to do well this function is going to go inside my state and what is it going to do inside my state is it's gonna go inside my state and find whichever value that has this right here I'm gonna find whatever value that has this and then it's gonna update this value with whatever the state was whatever the state was for example if the state was false then it's gonna update it but the only thing here is gonna add this exclamation point right here so if it was false it's gonna set it to true if it was true it's gonna set it to false and again we refer to that value by just doing state that false and ladies and gentlemen believe it or not that should be able to, to toggle our entire feature now if I click it boom this feature is being enabled and I can feel free to search and change that character accordingly whenever I change the character I want it to be able to hide as well so wherever you have the function that is responsible to update the character if you guys remember this was the function that handles submit it means whenever you submit the form this is the function that handle the submit here I'm gonna add this line here set state it's gonna say is character enabled then we're gonna set it to false all right so whenever we submit something we're also gonna disable that feature which means we're gonna toggle it to whatever it, it was so if we try that sterling axime boom it fetched the data it hide the feature and we can toggle that feature back in and do as many things as we want to and so on and ladies and gentlemen this is the entire app without any css yet yet again we're gonna leave the css as the last part but the last thing i'd like to do before we dive anything else uh as we mentioned uh, this is the last feature we needed the last thing i'd like to send here is this so wherever you have your state this is where your state is that includes the first name and last name so I'm going to go inside my show character function wherever I have this large this component that is being rendered here so this component what I'm going to do is the following I'm also going to send some extra data such as first name that's going to be coming from the state that's going to be first name and I'm also going to send the last name as well it's gonna get the last name from the state the reason I'm doing this is because now I can go back to the code uh, character component which is this one and I'm gonna add an extra attribute here called value and I can get those props such as the first name and last name and actually auto and put them inside the field which means I auto populate them whenever the user uh, go to that component so let's see what we have if I click that If I click that, you should be able to see this input is being populated. I can change them accordingly, however I want them, such as Sterling, Axime, and boom, it's working. All right, and ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, this is our full functionality of our application. The only thing that we need to get 
out of the way now is make sure that we can get the CSS out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and, and, and do that. All right. The first thing I'd like to do is uh, remember the CSS file is inside of here. So I'm going to add a couple style. The first thing I'd like to get completed here is go back inside my render function. Wherever you have this div, I'm going to add a class name here uh, called app. And I'm going to go back inside my CSS and I'm going to select that app and give it a more width of 700 pixels. I'm going to make sure that it's margin zero auto. And that should technically center it for me. So we end up having this one in the center. And lastly, I'm going to select the body. And I add a background color as as this. So if I add that background color, there you go. It changes accordingly. So I'm going to put my CSS into a separate. Okay. So a few things I'd like to get done. We move that welcome to my app message because I no longer needs it. I'm going to leave the show error message. The only thing I'm going to do is right after the message, I'm going to put a noted div here. That's going to be. All right, so right after the error message, I'm going to add a div that's going to uh, technically consider it as a header. That's I'm going to be adding a couple of things. The first thing I'd like to bring over is move the code selection inside this div. OK, and I'm going to add a class name here as something that's going to be the app underscore header. And I'm also going to add the character also inside that particular at header. So I'm adding two things inside of it, uh, the code selection, the, the character as well. In between them, I'd like to add a button that's gonna be responsible to get new codes. Now this button, let's see how it looks for now. It looks like this, uh, but I'm gonna add some style inside the app that editor. I'm gonna target that class. I'm gonna add some style. So this class, it has display flex, justify content, Align the item by center and give them a padding of 10 pixels. Let's see how it looks. And we end up having something that looks like this, where we can toggle and stuff like that. Of course, this doesn't work yet. And we can change the thing if we want to. Uh, but this one kind of a little bit weird. So let's go inside that particular component and style it accordingly. I believe this one was the code selection. So let's go inside of that specific component and style this one accordingly. For this one, it is very something very tiny. So I'm gonna create a style object here with a key called selection. I'm gonna align them to align item to center. To use that one, I can select the div tag and I'll, I'll add an attribute called style. By default, I'm gonna do uh, styles that selection. So that should at least style on uh, these two elements, kind of display them flex and align them next to each other. If I take a look at this, I end up having something that looks like this. And let's see if that still work. Yes, it is working. Lastly, but not least, when I click this button, it doesn't do anything yet. In my case here, right after we ever have the render function here, I'm going to get all this value from my state again. If you guys remember those value that we need, such as the num code, first name, last name, and here, wherever you have the button, I'm gonna fire in an on-click event. That's gonna do the following. That's gonna go and actually try to get this function because this is the one that is responsible to go and get every single random code. And I'm gonna call this function right here with all this value that I just had, such as num code, uh, first name, and last name. And ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, this function now should be able to get new codes for us. I'm going to put this on a new line. So I just put this button into a new line for you guys to be able to see how the function look like. And let's see if that works. So if I click that button, you see, it goes and get a new codes. And if I change this one to two and get new codes again, so far, everything is working as expected. The only thing we have missing is we have a last feature that we totally forgot. But however, we definitely going to go and implement that uh, and get that working. Again, if you guys need the code, the code is available. If you go to this repo, you should be able to get uh, this code available. All the code that we use for this entire uh, video should be available for you and you should be able to, to, to work with it as expected. All right, so let's try to implement our last feature. What is it? The last feature is if you guys remember when we demoed this application, there was like a tweet button here where you can be able to tweet 
uh, whichever codes that you hover over on. Uh, how can we implement that, in that functionality? Well, before that, let's try to add the tweet buttons to all these codes that we have. Uh, again, we have multiple component and the component that's displaying all these codes is actually the list of components. So if we go here, right after this code, I'm gonna add an href tag. I just add an A tag, which just something that's called tweet codes. There's nothing into it yet. And if I load this page, this is how it looks like. And if I have multiple codes, this is how it will look like. However, I don't want it to show on every single quote. I only want it to show whenever we hover a particular quote, that one we want to display that tweet button. But before we get this functionality done, I'd like to give the Twitter functionality completed. So I'm gonna add the link to the Twitter link. To add something to Twitter, you need this link with the prime text. The only thing you need to adjust here is wherever you have the text, that is whatever contents you want to be added. In this case, we want the quotes to be added. So we're gonna remove the hello world. We're gonna replace it with quote that joke with, and that should allow us to add the quote link to the text. And if we go here, if we click this button, it should take us to Twitter, which means the Twitter functionality is completed. And again, we can test it for multiple quotes. And if we click this one, see it takes the entire uh, tweet and ready to tweet it. But however, again, we don't want to display that tweet quotes when, uh, we only want to display that tweet codes whenever we hover over this codes. How can we get that done? Well, to get this done, we're going to need to do a couple of things. Number one, we need to go back to the app that component, app.js. Wherever you have the app.js, I'm going to add an extra property here called current index that's going to be equal to empty for now. And what this is going to do is this is going to keep track of every single element that we clicked on. It's instantly going to set this value to its index again. This is important, okay? Every single element that we hover over, it's going to set its value to the current index. And how can we set the value? Of course, we need a function. I'm gonna call this function hover. And this function is going to be responsible to set uh, this value with the index. It's gonna take a param here called index. And what we're going to do is we're gonna bring the set state. We're gonna set that value. And what was the value called again? It, it is something called coin index. So we're going to use coin index uh, every single time that we over over that particular element, we're going to set that value with the coin index of the element that we over over. Again, this might sound confusing, but the bottom line is every element that we hover over, we're setting that index and we need to send this function uh, to this list quotes. And the list quotes is inside the show quotes function if you guys remember this is where it's at so right here this is this component i want to send this extra property that calls set index on over i'm going to set this value send this value over there all right cool so once i set this value over there i need to come here and receive it as a prop so how can we remember this value is going to come here as a prop call props that set index but how can we use this value value to first get the index and also call this function whenever we hover well we, wherever you have the div elements it's going to take an order attribute here called on mouse over and this one that's when we're going to call that function which is set index over but there's something here to pick, keep in mind if we just call it like this by default it's going to send us the event object but we don't want that the way we want to call this is like this we want to call this one like so when we call it like this we want to send the index as the value through this function and this function again if you guys remember the entire job of this function is to get the index and set this value inside the state with the coin index. Now, we also need to send that index to this list component as well. So we're gonna put that into a new line. I'm also gonna set the coin index, which is gonna come from the state, to that component. So this component is gonna receive three things, the codes, the coin index, and then the one that is there to set the index. Now, we know two things for a fact right now. 
every single time the user mouse over it's going to set that coin index so what we can do in this case is we can say all right we're going to come here and do a check we only want to display this entire tag whenever props that that coin index is equal to the index that we own whenever this condition is true then that's when we want to display the h tag if it's not true then we don't want to display the h tag again this logic is the one that is going to allow us to only display the h tag whenever the user hover over with the index that we set and with the index that we currently on now this might not make sense for now but just keep that in mind this is one way you can get this working and if we take a look now of course we don't see it but if we over it now we see it and if i have multiple one you see i over over that and over that and there you go it is working as expected and ladies and gentlemen this is our entire application again you can feel free to style this accordingly however you guys want to but this is just an idea how you can get this entire full feature inside your codes to be able to use it effectively however you want them.